Hello YouTube, Sarge Bear 76 coming to you to talk more about fibrin and nitric oxide and systemic proteolytic enzymes. And the only reason why I'm making my eyes do that is because I'm so sick of reading about it and talking about it and making videos and screwing up and putting my foot in my mouth and looking like an idiot. Um, what's okay though? I'd rather look like an idiot than be an idiot. And I know I'm not an idiot, but from my last video, I pretty, pretty much did my best to, to, um, to show otherwise. Um, okay. When I talk about the systemic proteolytic enzymes and how they would bust the fibrin out of our blood, yes, that's a good thing. We want to do that. Um, when I talked about sleep apnea and how I would quit breathing and I would get hypoxia several times a night or low oxygen in my brain several times a night, it would, it would release nitrous, nitric oxide. And that nitric oxide would do one good thing and one horrible thing. And the good thing it would do when I would release nitric oxide every night multiple times is it would keep me from getting intravascular coagulation, which would be very, very bad. If you want to do a little research, you can look up a condition called disseminated intravascular coagulation and you see what it does to the body and that's horrible. So if you had that in your brain, oh wow, yeah, horrible, catastrophic. But we are made extremely um, resilient. We are made to, to protect ourselves naturally. Our body is constantly change, you know, like making adjustments to achieve homeostasis or balance to where you have the right amount of whatever in your blood, like pH or whatever. And homeostasis or balance is, is, the, is the key. That's what, what we're made for our body to try to achieve. So, um, you know, the fibrin that I've discussed before, that MSers have more of it and that stress stimulates more fibrinogen and whatever, that's true. I've done all that research. I understand that. I've understood that for a long time, for months. The nitric oxide thing, I'm st I still was having trouble understanding it. And I have a degree in science, kids, and I still screwed it up the, in my head <laughs> the way that it, I was supposed to understand it. So I'm going to tell you what the big deal is with nitric oxide now because I got a peer-reviewed peer neurology. Neurology are not evil. <laughs> you know, They still you know, know a lot about our disease. And actually, neurology has noticed that there is, there's a higher level of nitric oxide in MSers' blood and uh, cerebrospinal fluid during exacerbation. So they see a connection there. And it's also, neurology knows that nitric oxide damages axons of neurons. It is responsible for that, the, the really bad damage to the myelin and the white matter. So you're like, well, nitric oxide's a bad thing, right? Not necessarily, because the reason with the CCSVI, and you know, and this is pointing towards CCSVI even more uh, than I originally thought, just in a different way. When you have CCSVI, you're sending the reflux blood back into the brain. The blood's kind of stagnating. It's starting to get in a coagulable state or clotting state. So what happens is the brain, to defend itself, you know, releases nitric oxide. Nitric oxide opens the opens the veins which i had it backward and the other thing is um, it also thins the blood which is two really good interventions if you're having a hypercoagulation problem to open the veins and thin the blood would help move it out here's the problem msers do that all day long if we have ccsvi we do it all night long if we have uh, sleep apnea so what's happening is that nitric oxide, which is which is basically our body defending itself, the brain defending itself, saying, okay, thin the blood, open up the, the vessels. That's where it's bad. It's not on this, because I, I was misunderstanding it, and now I get it, and now I want you to get it, because I've made like three videos where I've said it wrong, and I'm ashamed of myself, because I have a degree in science, and I know that I should go, you know, I... I I should really truly have understood it more and 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 not taken some of my what I think because this is it's black or white and it's you know and I I watched this video of this guy 
um, Keemer one, you know, the CCSVI is a scam. And the more I watched it, the stuff he was saying, a lot of the stuff he was saying, I agreed with. That's the sad thing, is that we do need to be skeptical. We don't take my word for it because I've just admitted to you that I accidentally, I never would ever like mislead somebody on purpose. I didn't even totally understand it before I made the video because I was kind of hurrying to make the video and, and I wanted everyone to be happy that the video was out, but I really should have taken my time and, um, and really understood it a little bit better. Um, but I, I do now for sure that nitric oxide is a huge, huge part of the CCSVI and that fibrin is still a big part with the blood viscosity, etc. So, um, I hope this makes more sense. Um, coming out of my mouth than it sounds when I hear it in my head <laughs> because it is confusing, but that's, that's it. That's, that's, I finally understand the nitric oxide and I thought I did before and I was like, okay, so it, you know, does the opposite in the brain or whatever. Obviously it's making, you know, our, 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 it's making it to where we we're having, you know, it's not the hypercoagulation that's doing the damage. It's the response to the hypercoagulation. And that's the nitric oxide and the hypercoagulation. And still, you know, when you have, you know, blood going toward clotting in the brain, it's still going to gum up the works. And how I like to look at things is, is like I said, I've used the analogy multiple times is I look at the brain as, a, as an engine, as the car engine. And now, now I understand what nitric oxide is. It's like an additive that we would add to the blood, the gas, like stuff you put in your gas tank. It would be like, okay, like dry gas, you put it in, it takes the, you know, the, the water out of the gas line. But if it, what if that was also very damaging to your engine? So it's kind of, you pick your poison. So that's, that's the analogy I want you to use that ni nitric oxide is an, an, is an additive to the blood that you, that you're producing naturally as a self-defense mechanism. And if you didn't have the hypercoagulation, you wouldn't make it. If you didn't as much, if you didn't have the uh, the the sleep apnea, you wouldn't be making it 60 times a night as you quit breathing. So, and it's the nitric oxide that you know that does the that does the damage to the to the myelin in the white matter. So, isn't that awesome? It, and it makes more sense than the way I was making it. It ma it makes more sense, and it's more logical. And it's just easier to explain this way. And it's because, you know, I get it. I, I, uh, I don't know what, I, what was wrong with me. And it's actually making me think, you know, maybe I do have more cognitive um, healing to do. Because today I understood it and yesterday a lot better than I have in the past. So that's it. That's, that's the whole role of coagulation, CCSVI, and sleep apnea, nitric oxide. And I could make it in a shorter video. So God bless you guys. Thank you for um, to keep tuning into my videos. I promise I'll do a little bit more to you know check my facts because I don't want to mislead anyone and, and I don't want anyone to um, to take my word for the gospel. That's why I tell you guys to research because I miss things and I misinterpret things and I misspeak a lot. I rarely say what I'm what I mean to say how I mean to say it. And, you know, there's a Black Crows song called Bad Luck, Blue Eyes, Goodbye. And one of my favorite lines in that song, because it makes me think of myself, is, is um, I, I know one million ways to always pick the wrong thing to say. And that's me, you know, even if I have it right in my mind, I get it wrong when it comes out sometimes. Which makes it very difficult to be married sometimes, because, you know, like my wife's like, what? <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, that sounded a lot worse than it, I meant for it to be. Anyway, so, all right. God bless you guys. Have a great day. And uh, all my Canucks up there, I hope you guys had a good Thanksgiving. Hope you got big fat bellies. And uh, all my people over in the UK and, and Norway and everywhere, all over the world, I love you guys. And I just want everybody to just become love today. Today, just just today. Today, just everything you do, do it out of love and see if you can't do that every day. Bye.